So here we are, back at the top of the hill where I stopped the truck. Just took the truck around and parked it by the cabin. You can see it a little bit up there to the right of the screen. And I'm just gonna walk you up. So, a road here curves around. Um, there's a little turnaround up there. Uh, right here, behind this uh, locust, black locust, one of the only things that'll grow here in this little area is our tripod and our fire pit. Cooked a lot of meals on this tripod. This thing is awesome. Kudos to whoever welded this up. Um, it was a gift from my father-in-law and it has just been so useful. Um, over here we have the shooting range. It's starting to come into screen right now. And we will usually go right here, shoot into that hillside, uh, and it is a hillside even if it doesn't look like it. And we can even back up and get a longer range. I haven't come out here and really figured out the distance yet, but I will. And I'll build a covered shooting pavilion at some point. And over here, we have the cabin and my truck. And I mentioned that it was a terrible lack of judgment coming down here when it's this wet and tearing up my road. But as you can see, uh, my tar paper has blown off. Um, Basically, the weekend after I got this thing tar papered, we had 50 mile an hour winds and I didn't put enough uh, pieces of wood to support it. And this part just blew off. So, so here I am. What do, you, what do you let get ruined? Wood or your driveway? And I figure I can fix my driveway a little bit more easier than I can deal with this wood getting rotten out. You can see the rust from the nails already. So. Uh, so this is some leftover ash. Uh, we can get ash really cheap here because um, of the emerald ash borer. And so this is what my rafters and my loft beams are made out of. And I've got some more for a covered porch eventually. And it's really starting to s snow and sleet here, freezing rain. <laughs> so you can see that the cabin is built on piers. Um, I think piers are just a terrible idea, but I pretty much had no choice here. Um, I could have done maybe a permanent wood foundation, uh, the piers, and ultimately due to the nature of just not ever being able to get a concrete truck up here and not wanting to mix forever <laughs> with a mixer, I decided on piers. They're between two and four feet deep. Uh, the frost depth here is um, 22 inches. The snow load is uh, 20 PSF, so um, snow is not too much of a concern, although it's ironically snowing right now. And uh, I've got these about four to five feet on center um, with built up beams, built up two by tens uh, beams, and then uh, two by 10 floor joists. And my front deck here, which will eventually be covered. And the, here we are. Front door. Um, will be two windows here. Haven't sheathed the whole thing yet. So this cabin uses what's called advanced framing. Uh, where the studs are 2 by 6s and they're on 24 inch centers and everything is stacked. So you have a floor joist and stacked on top of it is you know a single bottom plate and then a stud 
which lines up with the floor joist and then you have a single top plate and then a rafter falls right on a stud. Um, that metal hardware that you see is called header hangers. Uh, Simpson makes them and these are what's called HH6s and the header hangers eliminate the need for uh, cripple studs uh, or is it, uh, jack studs I believe jack studs to support the um, the headers above the doors and windows and another thing that you do in advanced framing is you use the charge to size your headers exactly to the load and in my case this is 14 foot wide structure here and it is a story and a half and the charts don't actually go, at least the ones that I found on the southern yellow pine tables, they don't actually go down low enough for my load. Um, so I've just used double two by sixes, um, which was the next size up. And so here's the loft. Those are four by 10 ash on 24 inch centers. They sit on what's called a let in ledger. This is a, a legacy of balloon framing. You won't find it uh, in the current code, I don't believe. Um, but it has successfully been used on balloon frame houses for hundreds of years and what happens is the um, loft joist sits on that ledger um, instead of being uh, just nailed into the stud like uh, like they used to do on balloon frame structures. So it's actually an improvement on the way that things were originally balloon framed. Um, and in this case what it does is it also helps support the structure by resisting the spreading strength of the rafters. Um, so those, those rafters, uh, they're timber framed. Uh, you can see I've got a, I'm calling it a rafter tie. It's not really a rafter tie or a collar tie. Um, and this is in the open cathedral section of the cabin. Um, but that and the loft uh, joists prevent the structure from pushing outwards. Here we go. Um, camera is getting tricked by the sunlight coming in. And so these rafters are 4 by 8 ash hardwood and they're pegged um, at the peak of the roof. They're a uh, half lap joint which is uh, not as good as a tongue and fork but it's a lot easier for an amateur like myself to cut and it was a good learning um, process which this whole thing really is for me it's just a constant experimentation so over here is a 6 by 14 bump out off the back of the main structure which is 14 by 20 and what this is going to be eventually is it's going to have a shower over in one corner and it's going to have a single window here because this is the north facing side of the cabin a single small window right where the camera is facing um, shower in this corner over there have a composting toilet there um, and then right on this wall is going to be the charge controller, the batteries, the AC and DC distribution to the house. Um, and then where I'm standing right now, and I'll show you once I step over all this timber, uh, this little area right here is going to have coat racks and uh, gear, gear area and hooks and stuff that you can store your bikes or whatever it is after you come in, your hunting stuff, your boots. Um, this corner 
that I'm focusing on now is the kitchen. <laughs> Will be the kitchen. You can see some PVC coming up for a sink. Um, I've got a window opening framed in there but not cut out. It's the on the gable end so it's non-load bearing um, and again with advanced framing uh, if it's non-load bearing you don't put any necess unnecessary uh, studs in there you're trying to decrease your thermal brakes as much as you can um, so there'll be a window there we've got this window here we've got a doorway back on the opposite side um, so we'll have cross light and cross ventilation in every direction now we're looking back at the front door. Uh, this will be like a French style door with full glass, let a lot of light in. And over here, you're looking at what is a very small 8x10 bedroom. And you can see that the bedroom's also, also ceiling is also timber framed. Uh, this is what you'd call a kind of a hybrid timber frame because the walls are normal studs and uh, the rafters are not. Um, so we've got a window facing south right here that is going to look in the same direction that the main doorway does. And I've got another window here facing west. And then no window on this wall, which is where a bed will go. And you can see that I've got, you can barely see that I've got a rafter tie up there. Uh, it's a half lap dovetail joint. You can't really see it, but uh, that is what holds the roof together and the walls from spreading under the load of the roof. And my fingers are really cold, so I'm going to come back to you here in a little bit. So I'm up in the loft now, and you can see I've got pretty good headroom here. I can stand up. Sorry, I'm looking at the screen and not the lens. I apologize for that. I've also got to apologize for the audio. I don't have an external microphone yet. I'm getting one for my birthday. Uh, so in the future, you can look forward to some better audio, but um, don't have it yet. So, so we're up in the loft. And you can see I've got pretty good headroom. I'm gonna bump my head here. Um, I can go maybe three, three feet in either direction standing up. Um, gonna turn this around here and shoot some video. Uh, yeah, so, so here on either side, probably put a little twin bed. Um, there is the open section of the cabin where that green board is leaning up against the wood there and my cooler is. Uh, that's where the wood stove is going to go. And then over here on this side of the cabin, put another, or of the loft, I'll have another twin bed. And right here in the middle of this 24 on center bay will be a small window. Um, not officially large enough to be an egress window, but I am in the middle of the woods and I'm in an area that doesn't have uh, enforced building codes. That, that section of government does not even exist. Um, I would, if I were to call them up and say, hey, I need you to inspect my cabin, uh, they would say that there's nobody who exists whose job that is. It just the government, the county government, just doesn't have it. And there is no township here, or there's no zoning. Um, there's no town government. Um, and the state government doesn't do that. So, long story short, I don't feel like putting an egress window in my loft, in my little 300 square foot cabin, uh, so I'm not going to. You can see the front door there. And there's the back door. There's the 6x14 bump out that's going to have my electrical and my bathroom and my composting toilet. And there is the bedroom where I'll normally be sleeping. 
You can see the door framed out on the left. And there's the bedroom roof. And over here, you can see another one of those half lap dovetail joints that serve to keep the weight of the roof spreading that top plate out. Some interesting looking uh, blue pine down here. I don't know if this came uh, from Colorado. It's the only piece that's like that and I thought about not putting it in there because it doesn't match the rest of the pieces but I thought it looked pretty cool so uh, went with the chaos theme and just threw it in there. So I'm standing up on my roof and this is the view from the cabin and I'm just going to pan around here. There's my ash and my truck. And we're gonna look into the cabin from the outside. And that is the loft and you can see the cathedral area and my sloppy looking um, half lap joint. And this one came out a little bit better. So we're kind of panning uh, from east to west, looking at the southern exposure here. <laughs> 